What's up? Welcome to the Tedeschi Trucks Podcast. This is episode number 44, and I am Adam Choit. To follow this show, it's at Tedeschi Trucks Podcast on Instagram, and I am at Adam Choit on Instagram as well if you want to follow me, and it's the uh, same on Twitter. And of course, I have no affiliation with the band. This is not an official podcast or anything. I am just a uh, fan. And if you're listening, I'm guessing there's a good chance that you might uh, be too. Uh, and if you're not, you uh, should be, because Tedeschi Trucks Band is uh, awesome. But uh, please be sure to subscribe as well and give the show a positive review on iTunes. Doing those things is definitely uh, helpful and uh, appreciated. So, today's guest is photographer Alina Harmash. Growing up in southern Ukraine and now residing in the capital city of Kiev, this overseas Tedeschi Trucks Band fan tells me all about the musical and artistic influence of her family, and also how really all of her life's most important decisions actually uh, have centered around music. She loves all things Sweden and studied the language and culture, but it was in Copenhagen and uh, really uh, later in London where Alina had her most profound TTB experience, getting her first opportunity to shoot photos of the band. But uh, let's just get started. Here's Alina Harmash. Okay, so it's good to see you today, Alina Harmash. Yeah. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, for sure. How are you holding up? I'm all right. I think, uh, like we all are, trying to just uh, get through this uh, tough time uh, uh, as we can. Yeah, doing doing stuff to keep us on, on track. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Why don't you tell people where where you are and what time it is exactly? I'm in a I'm in Los Angeles, and it's uh, twelve oh four right now. So I'm where that where are you? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I live in Ukraine, uh, Kiev, at the capital city, and it's 10 p.m. right now. Yeah, it's a whole blizzard uh, outside. Yeah. Wow. Looks <laughs> looks warm, warm and toasty where you are inside, though. That's good. Oh uh, yeah. I try to put uh, some some light so it feels cozy. <laughs> let's you know? uh, let's yeah, it's good. Let's go. Let's go way back because you said you're not from Kiev. You grew up in somewhere else, and well, tell me a little bit about your background and. Maybe some of the early musical influences and music you heard when you were a real young kid. We'll we'll talk. Yeah, more. sure. Yeah, so I grew up in uh, the south of Ukraine, so it's uh, quite a long way from from the capital here, uh, from the Kiev. So my mom actually is a music teacher. So I had some um, good music playing uh, back when I was a kid. Uh, so I remember from the age of I don't know five or seven. She would uh, turn on like uh, performers like Joe Cocker, Eric Clapton, uh, Elton John. So I would I would say uh, I would try to sing along <laughs> to this uh, to this music and try to dance. And I and I think I, I liked it even uh, at the as I was a kid. Uh, yeah, so I pretty much uh, I, I got a nice exposure to good music stuff uh, back in the day. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. What kind of music teacher was your mom? She taught kids. She taught adults singing instruments. What, uh, what did she yeah, teach? She, uh, she teaches a music theory to the kids. Basically she used to work at a, at a an art school, uh, when I was younger. Uh, but you know, we lived in a very, uh, small town, so there wasn't much going on. So, uh, yes. Yeah, so she did what she could. She uh, she taught yeah, um, small kids and uh, piano piano yeah she uh, she plays piano so that's that's pretty much it but uh, my my dad was uh, was into heavier stuff uh, he was into Depeche Mode for example um, Alice Cooper so I w- I would listen to this stuff as well when I was a kid I think that's that's how I got into you know heavy metal. <laughs> <laughs> and stuff um yeah <laughs> that I was gotcha. nice yeah i was gonna ask so what about uh the rest of you? Uh, did, is that did your mom also teach uh and was she interested in like classical music or other styles or was it mostly just like uh the the sort of popular music that we all love classic rock and the british stuff and american music is that that's kind of like what she was mostly into and you get and you all your whole family really it sounds like yeah, yeah. Well, my mom was into it professionally, so of course she uh, she played some classical pieces as well. But uh, you know, as a kid, you don't really you're not really interested in in, in a classical music, right? Especially if you don't have a special education. 
uh, yeah, so, but I did, uh, I did uh, uh, try to play piano. And I, I think at, at the age of 11, I, I had some piano classes. But uh, at the same time, I was going to art school and to dance school. So it, oh. it was too much at the time. <laughs> I couldn't handle it all. You know, yeah, so, so you focused on on what at that point did you you said you focused on? Uh, yeah, I, I went into art school, so I kind of graduated uh, with a with the fine arts. Uh, yeah, I, I learned uh, sculpture, composition, so the basic art stuff. Uh, uh, and I'm I'm pretty grateful that I had this opportunity because this uh, later led into photography, but we'll, we'll, we'll cover this later. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I mean, what, I mean, what were you into as like a, a growing up, even through like middle school age, high school age, you said you just discovered heavy metal at some point and, yeah. and uh, were you a good student? Were you, uh, you know, going to a lot of concerts? What were you like as a kid and kind of growing up? Yeah, I pretty much, uh, I was an A student, so uh, I had to be, uh, it was expected of me, you know, so I had to be uh, performing well in all of the subjects, uh, and I didn't really have much time to hang out with uh, with friends, you know, I was really concentrated on my academic performance, uh, but I um, I found my, you know, uh, relief or escape in, in, in music, so I was listening to, um, you know, Ronnie James Dio, uh, as you said, Alice Cooper, you know, whatnot, a Rainbow. Um, I still listen to the, to the stuff. It's great. Uh, Twisted Sister. Uh, so, yeah, I was around, you know, 13 or 15. Yeah. And I, and I still listen to this stuff. Yeah, you love uh, rock, hard, hard rock and, and 80s rock yeah. and, and metal. You love you love all that. It's like that's your bread and butter, that stuff. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so um, I don't know. I was, uh, you know, I was raised in a very small town, so I didn't really go to concerts up until I was seventeen when I uh, moved to to Kiev, uh, the capital. Yeah. So that that's when everything started. When that's when the big stuff started. When you moved to the big city. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me about that. Yeah, sure. So uh, the the fun thing is, all my major life decisions were were made uh, because of music. So at, at the age of fourteen, like my adolescent years, I was really into ABBA, so the uh, Swedish uh, guys. So I thought, well, Sweden must be a great country <laughs> if they if they produce uh, musicians of this kind. So why not learn Swedish? Uh, it was just a thought. I was really, uh, I was good at humanities, you know, so I thought I should, I should learn Swedish. Uh, yeah, there were, uh, and of course I knew that Sweden was a country with, um, you know, where people have great uh, social insurance and uh, they have, a, they have a straight of, you know, uh, security in the country. So I, I thought it might be interesting to learn how this works and why Nordic region succeeded in that. So I um, I entered this program in Kiev, uh, concentrated on learning about Sweden and Swedish linguistics. So yeah, I I have a Swedish major. <laughs> wow. So did you end up going there? So you studied Swedish and the language and a lot about the culture mm -hmm. from Kiev when you were, you know, I guess university age, college age? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the thing is, uh, the kids in Ukraine, they graduate school, uh, they graduate high school when they're 16 or 17. So it's pretty much, uh, it, uh, it's quite early uh, compared to, I don't know, Europe or the US. So we, we get to become adults a bit earlier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm, did, so did you end up going to uh, Sweden? Yeah, I went. Uh, I went to Sweden every summer while I studied. I did quite a lot of volunteering there, uh, and I loved it. Uh, I love the country, and I still love it. But I don't think I, I want to live there. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? It seems just as cold there as as where you are. Yeah, even colder. That's <laughs> one of the there reasons I don't want to live there. Yeah, gotcha. I can't stand cold weather. No. And the, and the darkness for half a year. No, that's not really my thing. <laughs> yeah, well, that's yeah, true. That stinks. Yeah. 
you know, yeah, it's a life of um, an expat. Uh, it's it's pretty hard. It's pretty hard to fit in, especially in a you no know, really close society like uh, Nordic countries have. Uh, yeah. So as for now, I I do not plan to move uh, there. But yeah, I, I know the language and the culture, and and it's fascinating to yeah. Were you studying uh, all this the Sweden and Swedish stuff at the same time, like with as you were the arts? You said like were you in art school at the same time, or is that se- that was a separate thing? Uh, no, it was a separate thing. So I graduated from art school when I was fifteen, so still in my oh, hometown. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so that I didn't really proceed like making art or making pictures. I don't know. I had some sort of a block. Uh, yeah, so I kind of uh shut it down um uh, and proceeded just learning swedish and going to concerts in kiev yeah so tell me about some of the bands that you you saw uh in uh in kiev when you kind of first got there was it more heavy metal stuff uh, yeah n- not really because uh when i moved to kiev it was 2016 i think and we we just started getting uh you know uh international bands to perform here so I was uh, more um, concentrated on local bands. And one of the reasons I moved to Kiev is because I love this band uh, or, or originally from Kiev. And I was, uh, and I thought, I I want to be around them. I want to go to as many concerts as, as I can. Yeah, so I also had the opportunity to study in Poland, but then I, I changed my mind. And I just thought I will not abandon my country yet. <laughs> so I got to mm, experience it all uh, while I can in Kiev. Yeah. <laughs> How far is Kiev from uh, your hometown where you grew up? Uh, well, it's an eight hour ride. Wow. Yeah. That's not around yeah. the corner, but you're still no. in the same country. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I got yeah. you. It's a pretty, pretty big country. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> no doubt. And did you start to take photographs at all these shows you were going to in, in the city? Is that How did that all come together, the photography? Yeah, and, so uh, photography uh, came after uh, me discovering TTB. So I, I'll get into it first. Uh, yeah, sure. So it makes more and more sense. Yeah, floor is yours. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, at, the, at the time, like two years ago, three years ago, I was very into discovering female fronted bands uh, with great female voices. So because I'm a feminist, I'm an advocate for uh, female, uh, for women's rights. Yeah, so I was very into, you know, Stephen X, uh, Tracy Chapman, I don't know, Annie Lennox. Uh, and I would, I would try to find this uh, unique voices, especially low registered voices, and uh, you know this raspy, even husky voices. You know, it just th- that's my thing. Uh, <laughs> there's something about them. So I see I, where this is going a little bit, maybe. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm getting to it. So I stumble upon the the tiny desk channel on YouTube, and um, of course they they had the TDB uh, episode. So it was in January 2018. I remember exactly. So I first saw TTB on uh, the Tiny Desk concert episode. And I wa- I didn't have any exposure to blues specifically before before this. So I cannot say I, I liked what I heard like the first time, but I, somehow I just, I had to listen to them the, uh, the second time and the third time. And then... Uh, something changed. I mean, I was transformed instantly. <laughs> and I started digging their whole history, who they were influenced by, uh, like what, what musicians, uh, of course, they had a, a great influences um, from the uh, 70s and 80s. And I just started listening to all of their musicology, all their al- albums. Um, and I thought, this is it. I found my perfect band. <laughs> I couldn't oh, stop wow. listening to them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're so you're like me. I I would see it sounds like they're like your favorite or one of your top favorite bands of of all time. Because I didn't. I mean, I guess I didn't know that going into the conversation where it could be like, oh, I like TT band and like I like a lot of bands, and that's perfectly fine. But this is like 
this is a special, a spe- very special band to you. Yeah, That's cool right. They, yeah, yeah, right. You share the same experience, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and 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 Susan, of course. Yeah, I mean, I love all the TTV members, but 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 Susan is some somewhat special to me because of the voice, uh, as uh, as you as you could have uh, um, told me before. So she ha- she has this perfect pitch, and I I don't think I've ever heard a more beautiful voice up till up till now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, and she's super powerful. Like her voice is super duper powerful. Mm-hmm. And I've never heard her miss a note. Like have you yeah. ever? I've never. I've never heard. I've seen a bunch of shows. I listen to all the live things. Maybe a lyric here or there, but never like the wrong note or off key or anything like that ever. Like super perfect and super controlled, but powerful. Like, yeah, exactly. I get it. Yeah, and even uh, sometimes when she messes up the lyrics a bit, she takes it to such a beautiful place. I don't know, and it's so great to hear. Sure. It's great to hear that she's a, a live human uh, performing on the stage and she can improvise too. And her gear playing is, is amazing. I mean, yeah, there's uh, that too. <laughs> yeah. And they, uh, she and, and Derek are the perfect uh, duo. I mean, uh, the chemistry they have on stage is just captivating. <laughs> no, for sure. And I think, I think it's been that way. Since since the beginning, since, you know, anything that they've ever played together, if you go back and watch YouTube videos mm-hmm. from pre-2010, pre-2005, early 2000s, mm-hmm. you know, they have the chemistry on stage and that's only been yeah stronger and deeper, I'm sure, with how much they've played together. And I'm sure their relationship plays a part of that to yeah. having, having the, <laughs> of course. the good chemistry on, on the stage for sure. So mm-hmm. you just started taking photographs of them and we had that all. Uh, oh no, together. that that wasn't, that hasn't happened yet. So. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> no, that, that's, I'm, I'm log- trying to logically get into. Oh, let's into do, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do it. Yeah. So th- that year, um, uh, sadly after coffee's, passing unfortunately yeah i didn't i didn't get to hear him do his magic on stage uh, but yeah it was a hard time for everyone and for the ttb community as well uh but they had their european tour in uh, 2018 and i just thought i i gotta be there so i jumped basically on the first plane to copenhagen it was the beginning of april uh yeah so uh i I am really, I'm quite, uh, it, it's bad that I didn't get to hear them as as much before. So it was just two months. I was um, I was listening to them for two months, but still I thought I got to meet them. So it was a very, very small venue in Copenhagen, you know, uh, just in the neighborhoods. So, so there were residential houses just across the street. It was so quiet. And the moment I saw that the truck, uh, the truck with, with them and the, um, you know, and the gear for the concert, I, w- I had this tingly feeling. <laughs> I mean, I went there a bit like before the concert, so in uh, in hopes to to meet them, and I actually did. I met Susan um, uh, backstage. I was so starstruck. I mean, <laughs> it was uh, it was weird because uh, I prepared you know a small uh text that i would say to her beforehand because i know that i can you know uh, lose my mind in this kind of situations but she was so kind and she was so generous and she signed a photo for me and uh took a photo um with me and hugged me so i thought my life is complete now <laughs> and i gotta That's do awesome. something about it yeah <laughs> So when I came back from this, uh, you know, life changing for for uh, for sure trip, I thought I I should do something something about it. I just cannot go on like working at a call center. I, as at that time, I worked at a call center night shifts, so it was not anything like uh, creative. Uh, so I thought I should be around musicians. It was not enough for me to just be a part of the audience. So I wanted to contribute uh, in a way uh, to their art. 
Uh, and at that time, I was really inspired by Josh Brick's uh, photographs of the band, uh, Josh Brick and Kaylee Moore uh, in particular. So I thought, why not try photography? Uh, you know, uh, so I studied that. I attended some photography courses and maybe because of my art background, I knew I knew the basics. I knew the basics of, you know, uh, the image composition of uh of color um, theory. So I kind of knew how that worked. So I just, I had to figure out the technical stuff. Uh, yeah, so I started doing that. I started shooting concerts and it was the, the best decision I ever made, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. That's so great. Just, yeah. <laughs> so you were just shooting a bunch of concerts in Kiev when you got back mm -hmm. from... Uh from your TT Beach. How many shows did you see? You just saw that one Co Copenhagen show? No, two shows. Two, yeah. two shows. In Copenhagen? And in London. So and yeah, in, I'm getting oh, wow. I'm getting to that. So because oh, it's yeah. uh, quite special. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so yeah, but by the time they had their show in London, I had some like, you know, half year experience in photography. You know, I, I was shooting like crazy, like three concerts a week. I tried to get as much, uh, you know, as much stuff done as, as possible, just just to uh, get the hand away, just to be a little better, you know, than I was. So uh, I thought I should go to London. Like it's their only European show in 2020. So I just, I cannot miss this chance. And, you know, for for Ukrainian uh, person, it's really hard to travel to Great Britain because you gotta have a visa. So yeah, you can you cannot just go. So it was a yeah two month uh, process, but I finally got it. And I thought I should just drop a, requ uh, a request to shoot there. Of course, I didn't expect anything because it, well, it was Wem Wembley Arena. Uh, and I had uh, like uh, 200 followers on Instagram on my photo account. Like, what could I expect? Um, yeah, and obviously no one replied. So I, I was not sad. I was like, okay, all right, uh, I'll still get to see them in London. What could be better, you know? So finally, I flew uh, to London on uh, on February 1st, 2020, yeah, a few days before that. And someone emailed me from the Wembley uh, staff like sure take your pa uh, pass uh, in the box office one day before the show it was one day before the show so i was like what wow uh and and the the person said it in such a like uh easygoing manner like just just take your path, uh, pass like yeah no problem you can shoot there and i didn't bring my camera that was the problem oh no <laughs> yeah how can you so, not bring your camera even just as a fan? No, because you know, uh the gear is pretty yeah, heavy. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, and I was hesitant to bring it. So I don't know. I was gonna um, go with you know, sightseeing and just see a couple of uh, sure. London London places. So I was not yeah, planning to shoot anything. Uh yeah, so I had one day to find a camera in London. Uh <laughs> that was quite a challenge. Wow. Uh, yeah. And uh, at, the, at the same time, I met a, a great uh, girl from originally from Maine, uh, who's also a singer. And she uh, and she flew to London from Spain from her exchange program in the university to see TTB. And we kind of we met up and uh, she helped me a lot through this process. Uh, yeah, I was hysterical one way. <laughs> I bet. Because, uh, you, I could not rent a camera at just a regular um, rental place because I'm not a resident of the of the UK, so I just had to play uh, to to pay, sorry, a full deposit uh, worth uh, the whole camera. Uh, so yeah, so I could not, I could not. There's no, there was no way I was getting camera. But then uh, there was one guy on a on a website for you know private rentals. So uh, he just uh, handed me his camera, a really professional one, like not the one that I have. And I, I could not be more thankful to him. He basically said to me, I, I don't know how he trusted me, like a total stranger from a foreign country to give his like a 
camera worth a thousand dollars, a couple thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, so that's so that's crazy. amazing. Wow, yeah. yeah. He probably liked the photos that you had on your Instagram. He probably uh, looked at it and said, Yeah, she, these are good. I can trust her. I hope so. Well, he was a lifesaver. I mean, really, I, I thank him in my, you know, I don't know, my, my prayers, of, even though I'm not religious, but I thank him in my prayers. So. <laughs> For sure, I bet. <laughs> yeah, so it was the most amazing experience of my life. Yeah, I'm not exaggerating to 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 stand there in front of uh, TTV at Wembley Arena and to be able to sh- uh, to shoot the concert for they were they allowed four songs yeah they allowed to shoot for four songs I, th- I, th- I think yeah it was hard it was hard because I had to be concentrated you know on the technical stuff and not get too emotional about it uh, well I don't know <laughs> I kind of got through it yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think seeing it through the lens, it makes it like it that looking through the to a viewfinder, that kind of reminds you that you're doing mm-hmm. your your job as a photographer as well. But when you take your eye away and you let you can it's definitely easy to slip into the moment. And I've talked to other photographers who sort of have to deal with that balancing act well, you know, appreciating the concert, being a part of it, but also focusing on the task at hand. I'm lucky I don't have that that issue, especially with the podcast. I can just be an audience member. That's enough for me. Like you said, being an audience <laughs> member is not enough for me, for you. That's, that's, that's yeah. enough, uh, enough for me. But uh, did you get to roam around like the, for the, I guess for four songs, you said, did you get to roam around the venue, get close to the stage? What kind of access yeah, were you we were have? Actually, uh, the only access we had is in front of the stage, which is the best option. Yeah. Uh, we didn't really have any other options. So there were like a bunch of other photographers as well. And it was really, um, uh, I was really nervous just to get the camera settings right because it was like uh, a very professional camera, as I said, not like mine. But I think uh, I, I managed somehow. Uh, yeah, and after this first uh, four songs, I had to to run back to the uh, security office, just drop the camera, and run back to the mm, to the audience. Yeah, just to to stand there, and and finally let go. <laughs> That's good. Finally, express my emotions. Yeah. <laughs> so you you shot? Did you shoot like the first four songs of the, mm-hmm. the show? I got you. That's that's good. You kind of got it out of the way. You're able to, like you said, be able to enjoy the rest of the show. What else do you remember from from that evening? Oh, it was great to meet other fans. You know, uh, both uh, American fans. I met uh, David Flam, who was on your right. previous episode. Yeah, I think we. Uh, I stood uh, beside him uh, in the in the audience, uh, right in in the first row. Yeah, for the for the whole concert, uh, and he was filming. Uh, yeah, the concert as he as he does previously, and um, I also met some uh, fans from Italy, from Spain. And it's just great to to catch up to just share this excitement. Um, with with the fans, it, it was really the best experience uh, I could I could ever get. That's awesome. That's yeah. amazing. It sounds sounds like, and it sounds like the crowd was like sort of a definitely a diverse crowd of people from all over Europe and yeah. all over the the world. Mm-hmm. What was the what was the kind of the vibe or energy or feel of the crowd? Maybe even compared to some other shows you've been to, like is everyone standing and dancing were they so you know were they sitting that's always a big art big thing were they loud oh, were they yeah. drinking or were they quiet like what was kind of like the energy or vibe of the crowd obviously they love yeah. the band mm-hmm. together yeah that. so i think uh, the first you know 10 to 15 rows they were uh they stood up and they danced like uh, nobody watched them <laughs> and they cheered yeah so uh, I, obviously, I tr- I try to stand in the, in the front row just to just to be as close to them as as possible because I like to look at the performers' faces when they just like I would with my camera when they perform just to see the slight changes of emotions just to see their interactions on stage uh, and yeah people were uh, were cheering up for the and especially like closer to the end of the show. I think we got only one 
Angkor uh, because they um, they have strict um, you know time table. Curfew, yeah. So they, they, yeah, so they had to leave pretty soon. Yeah, but it it was amazing. Uh, it, it was totally unforgettable. <laughs> <laughs> I gather. I can just see I, the expression on your face just thinking yeah. about it, you know, how fond you, you know, look yeah, I just back have these these. pictures so of them just in front of my eyes just just now. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled up a couple as well that you shot. They, they're great photos of the band and I could see one of like Derek smiling, which is always good to get. Not that he doesn't <laughs> smile on stage, but, you know, it's yeah. it's still it's still something noticeable. He, you know, they're usually pretty serious and in the moment and Mm-hmm. You know, doing yeah, they're focused on them the, the mm-hmm. what they're you know they're they're playing music. That's what they're yeah. Right to, but you know, and the, the great yeah, the great thing about them is that it, they don't have to pull up a show to uh, attract their audience. So they they uh, they can stay like silent. They they do not speak for the whole show, but still the audience is the audience is so engaged. And they just captivate it with with their sounds and the, their with their playing. You, you know what I'm talking about? Like with the other bands, they have to you know cheer the audience up, just uh, talk to them every um, like between between the songs. But sure. they rarely do any talking. You know, their their music speaks uh, for it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> for for sure. Did you get to to meet the band or anyone uh, in the band? Uh... That, that um, night or that yeah we that were show? actually we were we were waiting uh, backstage after the show but yeah unfortunately we didn't get to meet them but i think they had uh, their uh, next u.s show just day after that so wow. i imagine they they just uh, drew um they drove back to the airport pretty yeah, like, right after the show yeah wow yeah yeah I, but I, it was still yeah it's still an amazing experience and one yeah. you'll never forget the London show. And mm-hmm. especially because you you had that time to not only learn more photography and, and hone and hone and improve some of your skills at that, but also the time to I'm guessing, you know, dive deeper and deeper into yeah. all of the music of Tedeschi mm-hmm. Drugs Band to the point where seeing them that second time was gonna be special with yeah. or without you shooting photographs, just being there and hearing the For music sure. those are the only yeah those are the only two times you've gotten to see them yeah live. so yeah just after the london show i decided that i will uh i'll have to go to new york for the beacon run the next year so but then you know what happened so sure. nobody got to see any shows this year but yeah Past year, so. yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, this, yeah, this first yeah. year. So we're not sure about this year. <laughs> yeah, not sure about this year. Yeah, would you be trying to go to the Beacon uh, this year if that happens in twenty twenty one? Wow, I'd love not to. Not sure. Yeah, well, yeah, I'd love to. I will do anything possible to to get there. You know, and no matter how much it costs, basically. <laughs> yeah, I think I need to get there. I've never done that that run myself. Like. But mm. that would be that would be worth your while if you're gonna fly over an ocean. I'm not even sure which one, but it would it would uh it would you know to go to six shows would be worth your while or you know at least uh, yeah. whatever it is, a bunch of them, as many as you can. Mm. I just I have a beacon uh theater photo on my desktop. So you know I'm quite determined to go there. Yeah, it's gonna happen uh, one of these days or you know, one of these <laughs> these years. Yeah, but how have you been to their uh, Red Rocks show? I have not. I, I've only been to mm. shows in Southern California, mostly in mm. LA. And I've been to, Ve- I went to a Vegas show as well mm. in Las All Vegas, right. which they haven't been to for a long time. But those mm. are the only ones I've been to. But a bunch, about 15 to 20 shows I've been to. Yeah. Over the well, last that, decade. That's a pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I've been seeing them since 20, 20, I don't think I saw a show in 2010, but 2011, I started seeing them. Mm-hmm. Maybe even late 2010. Who knows? Mm-hmm. But I've been following them for pretty much since the beginning of this band. Many people that I talked to even earlier, you know, yeah, seen Derek when he was a you know a kid and all this stuff. Yeah. What a what a history. I feel like I'll never run out of episodes because they can just go dive deeper because they know so many people and so many people have a connection to them. Yeah, it, it's so touched amazing. with their music over the years. Mm-hmm. And I just see how their music grows and transforms. It must be just magical, I imagine. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And 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 I know the uh, the tiny desk video that you're referring to. They play uh, three songs on that. But what else do you? Uh, I mean, maybe these days you're going to say everything. But what you know? How do you consume most of? Maybe it's probably more than one way, but like most of your, the TTB music that you listen to, do you listen to a lot of live stuff online? Do you listen to the albums that you own? Do you listen to, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. solo stuff of Susan? Like what kind what, what are you kind of like, uh, diving into, you know, maybe these days even. Yeah. Uh, I think I, I'm more into their live recordings because, uh, like I said, their uh, their studio stuff is amazing. Just of course, no question. But their live performances are a whole new universe. They would I say mean, the same. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's amazing how like one song can have so many versions, depending on what what mood they're in, what they're feeling. Uh, at this, uh, like being uh, at this at a stage, you know, and uh, they can take a song like so many places, and that that's because they have twelve amazing musicians, and everyone like cont- contributes something, and it's it's great that everyone has um, has their own place and has their time to shine. That that's right. also something special about them. Yeah. Um, that's a lot. Of, that's I bet I think that's a lot of Derek's doing as being a great mm-hmm. band leader and making sure that everyone gets that that time to shine. And it, and everyone yeah. does every single show I've been to. Like, I mean, I'm not going to say anything bad or negative or question any of of their choices. But it, it does feel like for me personally, like, oh, you know, when I think about after a show, everyone who I saw. I re- I remember the, the all every horn solo and and, and you know all the vocalists yeah, exactly. getting their time to shine mm-hmm. like every, like you said everyone you know gets their time and that's 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 cool to see and and, and Derek does a great job with that yeah sure. that's a sign of great leadership so yeah every, every literally everyone gets to tell their own story with their instruments and. Uh, how they interact and to see their like especially on live videos how they uh you know share their uh, music pro- um music solos how they just uh, get from one thing to another it's amazing to 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 see that not only I to agree. listen to it yeah i <laughs> agree uh, for for sure yeah and i think i also purchased uh, some of their vinyls even though I don't have a vinyl player uh, at my place, but like every th- three months or so, I go to my friend's place just to play the vinyls because it's a you know a physical form of their music, and I like to have it. I like to just to look at it when it's just uh, resting on my uh, shelf <laughs> and to listen to it as well. That's kind of fun that you bring your that you don't. I, I was like, at first I'm like, she has all these records and doesn't have uh, anything to play them on at home. But then when you said you kind of like go to your friend's place, that's kind of a fun, probably a fun little, uh, you know, thing that for you guys to, you know, share together, like you're getting able to share the music yeah. with her or him or yeah. whoever, you know, are they a big uh, music fan as well? Yeah, I would assume so if they got the record yeah. player. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's, uh, she's a great Beatles fan. So uh, I've heard of them. Not- yeah, yeah. So she she <laughs> likes CDB as well. <laughs> yeah, that that's uh, a natural thing almost. <laughs> Very cool. Well, and what's uh what's uh you know new or what are you working on these days? What's the future look like? I get that it's fairly uncertain for a lot of people out there. <laughs> you know, we're all trying to figure out the next step. But yeah. what are you kind of working on now these days? You know, photography wise, career wise. Uh, yeah, we 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 are fortunate to still uh, get uh, live shows, live performances in Kiev. So it's smaller ones, of course, like you know gigs at music bars. But still, like we get fifty uh, percent capacity, so uh, I can still uh, shoot shows, uh, and I'm really grateful because I know that uh, in some places around the the world, you don't get anything. You just uh, you have to stay at home. Yeah, and uh, there's nothing going on. Yeah, but, that's kind of yeah. how it's been here for the most part. Mm-hmm. A little bit of outdoor oh, stuff yeah. here and there. Things slowly starting to come back in, in mm-hmm. L.A. and California. But 
yeah, I think things will turn around soon enough, hopefully, you know, for the, for the better everywhere. But yeah. thank you so much for the time. I appreciate all the yeah. stories and the TTB stuff and the photography. Uh, feel free to, uh, you know, bring up any other stories or things that I, you know, we haven't covered about, you know, the band or Susan or Derek, like, you know, <laughs> I love, to, yeah, love sure. to hear that stuff. And you can also tell people where to find and follow you. I'll kind of, kind of give you the floor here again. Here you go. You know? Yeah, sure. Thanks a lot for inviting me again. It was, it was so exciting. Uh, I'm, oh, for sure. Thank uh, you. I'm, I was a bit nervous, but uh, I don't know. No, nah, great. <laughs> Yeah, You're but uh, I just wanted to thank you for all the amazing job you've done over this month with the podcast because oh, it really, thank you. yeah, it was it was really refreshing to to hear all these stories and just to see some um, you know some action in the community. And I, I was re I really I'm really looking forward to every one of your podcasts because thank you. That uh, means a lot to me, and that's kind of like you know as I continue to do this realizing that's what kind of keeps me going and it's the reason i do this it's for the fans and and you know the fans are part of the show too i want the fans to, to yeah. determine the direction of the podcast to some degree but you know give people what they what they like and want and uh no it's been it's been a journey for sure on my <laughs> end but i mean i'm enjoying it i wouldn't you know yeah. no one was doing no one was doing a podcast about tedeschi trucks band and i'm like maybe i should be that it person. was the best study. I really, it was great. You're doing a great job. Thank you. <laughs> Thank and I you. feel like I, yeah, I feel like a little bit like, you know, how you were describing the photography, like that you want, you know, the passion for that. I like kind of like feel, feel like I'm doing the, doing the right thing, you know, by yeah. pursuing this and continuing this and, and that's I'll continue to do it. Yeah. That's a great way to contribute to the band. And uh, yeah, not yeah, only like as them. a, yeah, of course. Not only you know as a as a member of the audience, but also like doing this amazing stuff and uh, and I'm sure like the fans love it and a lot of people are listening to your podcast. So it's it's great. Yeah, it's been it's been fun for sure. But enough about me. Why don't you tell people where they could find and follow <laughs> you and uh, see some photographs? And I'll let you get yeah, on with, sure. you with your night. It's nighttime by you. Yeah, but I'm a night owl, so I'll be just. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I won't be sleeping uh, soon. <laughs> yeah, so uh, please feel free to find me at uh, on on Instagram at uh, Moon Sister Photo, uh, and also on Facebook, uh, Alina Harmash. Uh, it's spelled H A R M A S H. Yeah, I post a lot of my photography stuff uh, there as well. And I also like manage two two music bands, so I try to post some stuff about them as well. Yeah, very exciting. You're keep you're keeping busy for sure. And again, thank you, thank you for the thank time. You so much. Maybe I'll see you at the Beacon in 2021 or 2022. I got to yeah. get there. That 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 would probably be the the you know that would be a good good uh, have a good time. That'd be fun for sure. Yeah, thank you so much. It was amazing. Thank you. Oh, oh you got it. Talk soon. Yeah, talk soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So there you go. My conversation with Alina Harmash. That was fun. Definitely cool to hear the perspective uh, of an overseas fan. I think I might just have to get to the Beacon uh, this year, should that happen. I have a feeling that would be a great place to finally meet many of the people in the TTB world that I've been uh, fortunate, enough, uh, fortunate enough to uh, connect with, you know, within the last, uh, you know, year or so doing this podcast. But uh, anyway, for now, hope everyone is uh, doing okay. And please check out Tedeschi Trucks Podcast on Instagram. That's at Tedeschi Trucks Podcast. And of course, remember to tap subscribe or follow on iTunes, Spotify, or via whichever way you listen to this uh, episode. And positive uh, reviews on iTunes, uh, Apple Podcasts are greatly appreciated. And I have another uh, podcast called People We Love Podcast. And what I do with that one is interview people from all walks of life. Most often comedians and other artists, uh, creative uh, types, about their uh, lives and uh, careers. And I also ask them to highlight someone they love, someone who inspired them, someone who influenced them, uh, help them in their journey. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, check that out. I've done over 100 episodes of that now. PeopleWeLovePodcast.com. And that's at PeopleWeLovePodcast on Instagram. And I am at Adam Choi on Instagram and Twitter. TTB themselves are at TedeschiTrucksBand.com. And I think that's about all I got for today. 
Uh, and again, thanks for listening. Um, later. Mm-hmm.